Hey everybody, Mr. D Bear here, and I've got my Isle Basic Survival Guide here for you today. Things we're going to be going over are basic controls, basic survival, AI sounds, and we'll dabble into camo a little bit. So if you're just starting to get into the aisle, this video should help you learn your way around and figure out how to get into the game and stay alive. Make sure to follow us on Twitch and come hang out and watch. We'll be playing this quite often. And make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. And here we go. What is going on over here? <laughs> what is it doing? So now we're going to do just a quick control breakdown and some other things. So WASD movement. Same thing with shift. So that's sprint. So W D S A. And you can move your camera free range all these times and it'll move you as well. Uh, so now alt turning is a pretty important thing to know how to do. So you hold alt and then you can turn with WASD on the spot. Or you can hold a direction and then turn with your mouse as well. Uh, it's really good for like standing your ground if you have multiple enemies. You want to be able to turn quickly so that they can't bite your butt. Next is uh, ambush speed. So left control will make you crouch, sneak around, and you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, the little footprint comes up with the arrows. That means your ambush speed is ready. And you have a faster speed when you start sprinting. Now note, if you, for some reason, let go of shift or maybe let go of W, and then you try to run again, you'll lose the ambush speed. So you can kind of muck it up a little bit by possibly pressing a wrong key, which will make you run slower and then you will possibly die. Uh, next, biting. That's pretty self-explanatory. Left trigger. Uh, the hitbox is kind of, you know, it's, it's different on different dinosaurs. But basically where the head goes is where it's going to bite. Next we got the Q sniff. Hold Q, you sniff, and it's going to show you water sources, gore piles, and footprints. So as you can see, those are all my footprints on the ground. They're kind of highlighted yellow. But you'll also be able to see other dinosaurs' footprints. Water will kind of glow like this. And for larger bodies of water, you'll actually be able to see them through terrain. Uh, you will be able to see like a pond or a lake. If you look at a river, if you look at it directly, the water, the water will shine a little bit like that, like it was. Most dinos can sniff and walk at the same time. Um, herbivores for the most part can't, I think. I could be wrong. There might be one herbivore that can sniff and walk at the same time, but most of those you have to stop and sniff. See how these uh, rib piles, gore piles are glowing red? Those will also show through terrain. That's important for when you are trying to see if there's anything else around you that's been killing AI or killing other players. That guy's still doing his thing. Uh, but fresh dead bodies won't show up like that. So bodies with skin on them. So it's only the piles that are gored so that the ribs, and I'll show you what I mean. So we got the two dead AI here. I'm gonna eat one, make it a gore pile. Little taco ribs. Now you'll see that that will glow red and have that bit of stuff around it. And that body that still has skin on it will not show red. And they're decomposed, turned into gore pile. It's glowing now. Another movement with swimming. If you get your ambush ready, and then you launch yourself in the water, you kind of carry a bit of that ambush momentum for a bit. So that'll help you get across water more quickly. The next thing is resting. You push H to rest and you'll sit down. You'll regain stamina and this will also regain you health. Important thing about this though is when you take bleed damage from dinosaurs, resting will keep you from going below 10% health due to bleed. You can still die obviously if something comes up and is just biting you and you're defenseless when you're resting too. You can't bite, you'd have to get up before you'd be able to do anything. Your healing is increased by a lot this, so it's a way to heal, get your stam back up. Also, this is how you incubate ne eggs in nests. So you have to actually sit on them. You cannot crouch. Now we'll do bleed damage. So some dinosaurs have different amounts of bleed damage that they do. Gigas have the highest bleed damage. Dilos also have really high bleed damage. Allos, they're that type of hunter. Raptors also have good bleed damage. So the goal is 
you run by and swipe a bite on somebody, you'll see blood coming out of them. It's not coming out of the Ava, unfortunately. But you'll see blood pools on the ground. That's how you know that they're bleeding, which is a tactic that um, a couple different dinosaurs use. Try and get that bleed on you. So when you're bleeding, it's important to know that there's different multipliers for the damage based on how you're moving. So if you're standing still, I believe it's one times damage. Uh, walking is a little bit more damage. And then full out sprinting is four times bleed damage. So if something is bleeding you and you're running away, you are going to die very, very fast. So honestly, if you're caught up in a situation like that where you have a lot of bleed on you, that's where it comes in handy to be able to alt turn and stay in your ground so that you can fight night vision in, turns your night vision on. Some dinosaurs have better night vision than others. For example, the Dilo, who can probably see three times as far as I can with the Utah at night. Some dinosaurs have jump, for example, the Utah does. So, space bar, pretty self-explanatory. I can't believe I landed up here, that was pretty sick. Uses a lot of stam though. If you keep consecutively jumping, it'll use more and more stamina each time. So if you press the insert button, you'll see your stat. Let's see, you can see your weight, how fast you can go, and your bite force. This is really interesting because you can click to copy your location. So if you're on the map, the actual aisle map, you can click this, it'll copy it. And there's a handy little map that I will put in the description that you can use to find your location on the map. It's really, really handy for knowing where you're at, knowing where you wanna go. Another important thing in here is your growth percentage. So obviously, once you're 100%, you'll be able to grow. And how you grow is you push escape, then you will see this growth. Once it reaches that, the numbers will disappear and it will be a clickable button, like so. You click it you grow. Growing is all time-based. There's nothing else that makes growing faster. It's all time-based and some dinosaurs grow faster than others. And then once you're an adult and this number reaches that number, you'll be full grown and have the max stats that you can have. But until you are full grown, you do not have the max stats that you can have. You're not as fast as you can be. Your bite doesn't hurt as much. Your bleed doesn't do as much. Safely logging out is kind of the last thing. Wait for the timer to go down and then you'll safely log out. If you log out before this timer reaches zero, you will stay logged on for five minutes and something will probably kill you. It's a good idea to get into a habit when you eat and drink to crouch and get your ambush speed ready while you're drinking. Something runs up on you, boom. You're gone. Same thing when you're eating. Oh, another thing, you can break your leg. And fall damage kind of depends on the weight of the dinosaur. So the bigger dinosaur you are, the easier it is to break your leg. So running in forests with a bunch of rocks and you hit one and it launches you, well, you might break your leg. You might die also. Let's see if I can break my leg. I don't Oh, yep. So when you break your leg, movement is very slow. You heal that by resting. Get the little bone. That damage will slowly tick away all the way down to zero. You will no longer have a broken leg. It takes about four to five minutes depending on the damage. Here's where bleed damage will show up. That just about covers the basics of moving around, controls. Oh, your fun calls. One through four. Broadcast. Friendly call. Doesn't sound friendly at all. Angry call, and your health call, and then your talk, which is F. Also notable is when you type in chat, your dinosaur will bark. It will make a noise, and other dinosaurs will hear you, and they will come find you and kill you. The first group I ever got in, I was like, hey guys, and then my dinosaur made a noise. I didn't know that it did that, and then something hurt me and just came and killed me. So be careful with that. So the next thing you wanna do is find yourself a growth spot. I prefer small streams like this over small ponds and central water sources, just for the fact that this stream is very long. Other players could potentially go upstream or downstream Versus where if you're at a center, like a circular water source, if you go to drink and something else is around there and goes to drink, it's going to see you. This is, hanging around a place like this in a small stream reduces your chance to see other players when you go to drink, at least in my opinion. So first thing you wanna do when you find yourself a spot to chill is you wanna sniff around, right? You wanna see if there are any gore piles around. 
which will highlight red. So that'll mean another player was around killing AI. You want to look for probably footprints. The main thing you're looking for is gore piles because that'll let you know that there's another player around. Now the next thing you want to do, you don't want to stay next to your water source. You don't want to just come sit right here and hide right next to the, the water because that's going to increase your chance of running into another player, especially when you start to spawn AI and you need to go kill the AI. Because anybody coming by here and perhaps drinking water is going to hear your AI and more than likely know that there's something around. And if you've been killing AI, they're going to be able to sniff and see the gore. So what you want to do is you want to travel away from your water source far enough that players can't smell the AI that you're killing so they can't see the gore. And hopefully far enough away that they also cannot hear the AI. So typically what I like to do is travel a little ways from my water source, kind of face the water source, point my tail away from it, so that the AI will be spawning behind me and to my sides, further away from the water source, reducing the chances of another player possibly hearing it. Now another thing you want to do, when you're at full water, full health, you want to go ahead and get that logout screen ready and prepped. Because when you're growing um, an apex by yourself, you're in the juvie stage, you're in the sub stage, something comes along, is tracking you, saw your footprints, saw your gore piles, and they're walking up on you, you want to be ready to log out in an instant, right? You don't want to waste that two or three, you know, maybe you're five hours into your grow time, a pack of Dilos or a pack of Triceratops or whatever just comes along and yeets you off the face of the earth. You want to just have that logout screen ready. I had it happen to me just yesterday. I was growing my Rex, had my logout screen ready. I heard footsteps behind me getting really, really close. I think it was a trike or a, a dibble. And so I logged out, probably saved my life. That is a good habit to get into. Next is you want to be cognizant of where AI is spawning around you. So if you hear AI spawn in front of you, that should be a warning sign that it could possibly be another player. Or if you hear AI spawn considerably further away from you, that is another sign that there could be another player around. Also, when you are starting to go after your AI, I advise being slow and careful about it and not just diving right at it. Sit for a second and see if anything else is going to go for it. Because the last thing you want to do is just go charging at some AI and then some full grown Rex or full grown Giga or a pack of Aloes shows up and you're plain as day out in the open and you're dead. At least if you wait a second and see if anything else goes for it, you're still hiding, right? You're still in your bush, you're sneaking around. You're gonna have a better chance to survive because they probably won't see you yet. It gives you a chance to sneak away, maybe get your logout screen ready, and save yourself two hours of grow time. So when you're first starting out as being a carnivore, it can be a little confusing sometimes as to what is AI and what is not. If you hear in the background right now, you hear the birds chirping, and things like that. At night, you'll sometimes hear owls hooting and birds off in the distance. That's all ambient sound. So I can move my camera around and I'm not getting any directional value out of where those sounds are coming from. Now, AI is different. When you hear AI, you'll be able to move your camera and tell which direction that they're in. And now I'm gonna give you all the sounds that the AI make. So when you hear an Avaceratops, it sounds like this. And that's a sound you'll hear from a distance. And then if you get close to it and you scare it or something else scares it, you'll hear this. And then it will start running, more than likely. An Orodromius, aka people call them Oros. And that's what you'll hear. It's kind of pigeon sound. And I'm pretty sure they make this noise when they get scared. And then they'll start running away. So this is the Oro. You'll also hear him make this sound sometimes. That one too. You'll hear that. Now this is the Psittacosaurus, a.k.a. the Taco. This is the sound that you'll generally hear from them. And it's very loud. 
when you hear from the player perspective. And this is their help call, which you'll hear when you get when you get too close to them. And then they'll start running. You'll also hear their aggression call quite a lot. Now the last type of AI you'll hear is this guy. And they're pretty annoying. And they can scare you sometimes too. They have the least amount of food value. Now just to talk about camouflage real quick. Uh, you know, it's not completely necessary to go super dark camouflage, really dark colors. Um, it'll give you a slight advantage, obviously, but it's not 100% necessary. I mean, if you want to go around looking like a giant dreamsicle, you can. Because when you get in trees and things like that, it's going to cover up a lot of your player model. Will those colors stick out more? Yes but it's not 100% necessary for you to play the game. So you can go around looking like what you want, but just know if you really, really want to get sweaty with like the survival thing and blending in, it could be better to go darker colors so you don't stick out as much because people are going to see you from a mile away with this skin. But you also have to think, if you're a giant dark T-Rex, people are probably going to see you from a mile away anyways because no matter what, you're a T-Rex and you kind of stick out.